Hi, I'm David Gray, and I'm going to talk to you right now about the uh, the new Image Lab 35 millimeter slide and uh, film strip scanner that we just acquired here in Academic Technology. Um, it's really easy to use, and we have it available so that you could either bring in your slides and uh, digitize them here in the uh, LL111 Faculty Technology Center, or you could even check out the device and uh, take it with you and sit in the comfort of your own living room scanning away at your slides or film strips that you might still have floating around. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, you can uh, continue watching this video for instructions on how to use the Image Lab slide scanner. All right, so here we have a, a pretty typical setup when you check out the device you're going to end up with the actual Image Lab scanning unit, which is a simple enough device. There's an SD memory card, uh, a little display screen, and then on the top of the device are all of your controls. Uh, there's a selector switch that uh, really, for your purposes, all you'll care about is the off and scan positions. Off, of course, being when you're not using it. And then if you are processing slides, there's a scan slide button. If you should happen to be doing film strips, uh, there's actually a negative button as well. But uh, for these purposes, let's just talk about slides, because that's the most common thing. For the slides, you would take this framework. We actually have two of these, so it's possible to set up uh, uh, two different strips of your slides to work with. You would place the slides into the slots, close the framework on top, and then the entire thing you physically shove into the device, okay? And I'll show you a nice close-up of how that works when you're doing it in a moment, but uh, the hardest part, in my opinion, of scanning these things is to keep having to open up the framework and take out the old slides, put the new ones in, and lock it down again. So you might want to practice that activity a couple of times before you really get working on it. And then, of course, you're going to have to find your slides. Now, in this particular case, these slides are already set up in a carousel to go into a slide projector. So uh, I had someone bring these in because I had no 35 millimeter slides of my own. So for me, the hardest part was figuring out how to open up the darn thing. Okay, There was, of course, a trick to it. And then, naturally, you'll go through all of your slides and have to manipulate everything. Okay, so stage one of scanning in some of these slides get your slides, whether they be in a carousel or just a box full of slides. And of course, when you pull out these slides, um, if it's from a carousel, chances are they're stored upside down. So you will have to look at the image that's in the slide. And then um, if it's something that you know matters, whether it's backwards or forwards, make sure that you have the slide right side up in here. Okay, The framework does have a label, this side up, and a an in box, so it will kind of matter which way you put the slides in, but you would load all your slides into the frames in order uh, and you know pay attention to which way because of course the slides are an aspect ratio where they're narrow in one dimension. Make sure that you match that up with the windowed rectangle. A couple of false starts is all it'll take before you remember that one guaranteed. And then snap the framework closed. Okay, now with the scanner. You actually have to change the control switch on top from off to scan. And the screen will load. Takes it a moment to get going. Then you physically take the cartridge, make sure you're following the arrow with the correct side up, and you shove it in one side of the scanning device. Um, doesn't take a whole lot of force to get it in place. And then you'll see in the window on the scanner, the slide is uh, showing up there. Let me just look at this myself, and that looks fairly well lined up. Obviously, when you're doing this for real, you'll want to be looking at the screen and maybe wiggling the uh, slide, ar slide set around to make sure it's lined up perfectly. And then you just hit the slide button, and it basically takes a picture of the slide. And then once it's done, as I'm sure it is by now, yep, it returns you back to the screen with the little yellow border on it. And then you would just shove the slide car carriage in a little bit further. Clicks in the position for the next one. Ooh, good picture. House. Make sure that it's in frame properly. Hit the slide button again. Again, that just takes a moment to scan it and return you back to your default screen. We're back there again, all right. 
shove it along to the next one, line it up, scan it. So it doesn't take all that long to process each individual scan. The uh, real time sync is, make sure this is done, yep, uh, is going in and then manipulating the cartridge itself. So of course once you've got your scanning done, you're going to have to open up the framework again and that takes a little bit of practice and it's even harder to do upside down. Um, <laughs> come on frame. There we go. And then you open it up again and you'll just want to pop your slides back out and you know put them back into whatever your containment is. If it's on a carousel, you'll want to try to put them back in the same order of course. Uh, and then rinse and repeat over and over again for all of your slides. Okay. Next up we'll be showing you what you can do with the uh, images once you've got them scanned into the device. Just make sure, especially if, like right now, you're running off of battery power, you flip the switch back to off when you're done so you don't waste all the power. Um, the scanner device does come with an AC adapter, but as you saw right here, even without having it plugged in to the uh, wall outlet, it will run off the three AAA batteries it takes, and so you could sit in the middle of your living room and just go through an entire box of slides if you wanted to. Just, uh, well, personally, I'd prefer to have a tabletop to set this on because you don't want to, you know, move a little bit right in the middle of a scan and get things blurry. That was the hard part, though, actually getting the scans done. Okay, once your scanning is done, the big question is, how do you get your images, which, by the way, the scanner saves as a standard JPEG file format, uh, out of this and into your computer so you can do something with them? Well, there's two ways to go about it, and uh, which one's easier will depend on what type of computer setup you have. Uh, the easiest way, in my opinion, is to just push in and take out the little SD memory card that has all of those JPEG files saved on it. And uh, that's easy for me because I have an SD scanner on my computer monitor, so I can just shove this card into the monitor and it recognizes it as if it were like a thumb drive or something else that I can pull files off of. And then I can just move the files off of this card and onto my computer and do whatever I want with them. Um, and then just remember, and this is the hard part, to put the SD card back in the scanner before you try to use it the next time. Okay. Now, if you don't have an SD card scanner uh, on your computer, the other thing you can do is on the back of the device, right next to the power button or a power adapter hole, is a socket for a micro USB, or I'm sorry, mini USB connector. And the device does come with a mini USB to USB standard cable. Um, so you can just plug this in here plug this socket into your computer and switch over on the selector switch to the export mode. Okay. Now it will draw power but just from the batteries is fine and what will happen when you plug this into your computer is that it will recognize this device as if it were an external hard drive and it will let you access the files that are saved on the SD card. So effectively this scanner is an SD card reader. If you have one built into your computer already, just go ahead and use it by pulling the card out and shoving it into your computer slot. If not, you can use the USB cable to uh, go ahead and export. So you have to flip the switch all the way over to export before your computer will recognize it. And then just make sure you set it back to off when you're done. So pretty straightforward on how to hook up to get the files. And then I'll show you in a moment what the file formats really look like and uh, couple basics, at least on a Windows computer, of what you can do with the darn things. Okay, so here we are on my computer and I'm going to show the process of actually getting the files off of the device. Now, uh, since it works exactly the same either way, I'm going to show having the uh, ImageLab slide scanner plugged in via its USB cable to the computer. So I have that all hooked up right now and I'm going to flip the switch from off over to export now the device itself dings and has a little power indicator and then the computer recognizes it as a removable disk and I can just say open the uh, folder and it will bring up, of course on another screen on my computer, uh, a window showing me the contents of that uh, SD card in the scanner. So I just open up the folders to see the different images 
that I saved, those three slides that I scanned in the previous videos, I can just move right onto my desktop. And since they're pictures, they don't take very long to move over. And I can close that down. And looking at the pictures themselves, um, I can look at some of the information about the image. They are JPEGs. They're pretty good sized. I, I've seen this take pictures slightly under one megabyte up to slightly over two. And that's because it's scanning them in at a really high dimension, even though it's a uh, fairly low resolution. And that's what somehow averages out to the uh, pixel rating that the scanner has. Um, at any rate, they're big. And so when you put these into some program, uh, you're definitely going to want to uh, resize them down, okay? Uh, you're not going to want a 3,500 pixel wide image. In fact, this is just a little uh, photo viewer that comes with Windows, so I can find the different things. And uh, of course, this one's the one that I had to deliberately tip so I can re-aspect it so it's turned over uh, 90 degrees clockwise and so forth. Um, I personally like going through these uh, in the preview tool to um, make sure that they all look correct. And oh, look, this one had words on it. And I actually got it uh, in the direct, correct direction on the slide scanner. Um, otherwise, I'd have to you know, flip things around in some graphic editing program. At any rate, uh, there's the slides that I scanned. And if I'd had more, I'd just have more files to look through on this computer. Okay? Uh, from here, you can put them into wherever you want. So if I was going to put these into PowerPoint, um, there's actually a little gimmick to that. Let me fire up PowerPoint here and show you. Uh, there's two ways in which you might want to put these in. So let's, let's get ourselves a nice new blank slide to work on here. Okay? First way is I can take this picture and I can drag it onto the slide. And that thing is huge. It's showing the slide without resizing it. So it's that true uh, 35 100 pixel wide image. I don't want to mess with that. I'd really like PowerPoint to resize it for me. So instead, I'll go onto the Insert tab and say I want to insert a picture and then choose that picture off my desktop. And if you use the Insert component, it actually resizes the image down to the slide so that, fill that in on the screen for you. So you can see it actually shrunk it down and uh, it looks like with 35 millimeter slides, it doesn't match the exact aspect ratio of a normal computer screen. So you'll have some slop background on either side of the slide. But that's a nice, easy way to, to resize it is to use the insert picture function instead of just dragging them onto the slide. Either way, once you put them into PowerPoint and save it, it's going to end up uh, compressing the pictures a little bit. So you'll save on some file size there as well. Not going to bother saving that now, though. So that is what you can do with the images uh, to get them off the slide and even drop them into a PowerPoint presentation. Pretty simple, huh? So as you can see, it's really not that difficult to use the slide scanner. Um, the uh, biggest caveat is make sure you get your slides in the right side up. And even if that gets messed up, you can easily fix it on a computer after you're done. So if it's uh, something you're interested in, you should either contact our department or uh, um, come on in and we'll uh, have the device checked out to you at any time you want. Easiest way to get a hold of us is to just use the contact information on our website at www.palomar.edu slash ATRC and that'll get you in touch with uh, any of us in the office who can help you out. Okay, so good luck with your slide scanning.